Hello everybody, this is Mike Pintar. I'm getting ready to start a new painting, but I first wanted to talk a little bit about composition and how I'm arriving at this point. Uh, I've got a couple of things I want to cover, but uh, I firstly wanted to go back to the master, or at least one guy I love, Richard Schmidt has dedicated the entire chapter 8 to composition out of A La Prima. And composition has a lot to do with design and a lot of variables. I'm mainly talking about uh, oil painting and landscapes and what I might do to think about how I'm going to compose uh, a good picture. Uh, he's got lots of different thoughts here. Well, we got to be careful. Balance, um, harmony. We've got lines of direction, movement, and rhythm. So there's a lot of things to go over uh, if you really want to dive into composition. But at the end of the day, it's what you think is a good composition. Hey, how about that one? What about the composition on that one? A little bit different, but I like it. I like the way it turned out. So at the end of the day, composition is really up to you, the artist. Yes, you should do portraiture with the head located in the upper third uh, of your canvas. Uh, so there's lots of different rules for different types of paintings. A couple tools that I use. Um, one really good thing here, because I'm going to talk a lot about photos, is the proportional scale, proportional scale that I've had for years back in my key line paste up days. Um, when working from photographs like this one off the computer, just trying to figure out how is this photo going to transfer to a canvas. So you got lots of different sizes. Um, I did a little sketch here on a 9 by 12 to see how things might lay out. And then this canvas is going to be 1824. And the proportional scale is nice because I've got a 7.5 by 5.5 photo that I put a grid on, split that up, put the grid on. I've also got the grid laid out on the canvas but now I can figure out where does seven and a half and five and a half fit into a 2418. And without getting into all the gory details of how these things work, you basically have a uh, original size, and then you've got the reproduction size on the outside scale. You line up the numbers, and it will tell you how things will scale up and what percentage the original needs to grow up to to be put on a larger size canvas. Photos, the bane of all artists, not every photo means it's going to be a good painting. And you could end up taking hundreds of photos and only end up with one probable candidate for a painting. So I've got this guy here that I've tweaked a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move a few things around from the original photo Take some things out, uh, but for the most part, I like the way it's being, the nature composed that, and I'm just going to shift a few rocks in a different direction when I actually lay it out on the canvas. So that's kind of where I'm at, what I'm thinking, lots to do with balance, light, uh, the design, the flow uh, of how things might come across the canvas. My center of interest is going to be off-center. That's what I like to do when using the grid method. I've gridded out the photograph, so I like this area in here as my center of interest, which is slightly off-center. This rock, though, is ending up dead center in the middle quadrant. And I'm going to need to move some things around to help fix that. I think I'm going to come down with the most of the painting and add in some things that aren't here onto the top to get this 
horizon line down on this upper grid line. So that's what I want to do with composition for this particular piece. And let's get to some painting. Okay, I'm taking a, a quick, uh, just a sanity check here, looking at composition. I've stepped back several times with my ridiculous light coming off the side here. Uh, I think it's heading in the right direction. Um, just change a couple of shape sizes, and now I'm working up the back round. I kind of keep it real loose. Again, my center of attention is in this area here. So that's where I'll put the most work. Um, but I'm just trying to be real light and loose in the background for some rocks and trees, distant. Uh, the landscape was going up a side of a small mountain. So that's what I'm shooting for right now.
Just a quick uh, stop here. This is the photo I'm working from and I've been working on the river and the water flowage and uh, these distant rocks here trying to get some motion and action in the water while I got a general idea of color um, more interested in how this water is moving compositionally trying to keep the uh, balance working uh, working in distance up in this region smaller pieces of paint and pieces of color and overall uh, a feeling of water flowing foam uh, wild surf and current if you will a lot of palette knife through here so my palette has been I'm going to point her out here uh, ultramarine blue deep cobalt blue light trans red oxide viridian green and uh, I've got some greens in the water and that was with the cad yellow deep I don't think I used yellow ochre on this particular piece so from here mixed up uh, this green which was the cad yellow deep and um, ultramarine blue deep cobalt with viridian and the purple was uh, ultramarine with the uh, I did have a little bit of terra rosa in there and uh, some of the uh, trans red uh, another piece of green was cobalt blue with the cad yellow deep and then tinted a lot of that down with titanium white so that got me going in this direction here I've looked at it a couple different ways and a couple different angles and I, I like the way it's headed compositionally this rock is uh, I'm not sure what to do with that little guy it's, it's right here and while it's there it's kind of subtle because there's a lot of action going on in the water. I'm not, I'm not sure what to do with this edge. Uh, I might have to think about this a little bit while it's still wet. But anyway, that's where I'm at. Working my way towards these big foreground rocks. And then somehow this very shallow... I was standing right on the edge of the river. Uh, this is like an inch or two deep with this water coming in through here so not sure what I'm gonna do there yet how to create that or just leave it real subtle and not focus on that part uh, anyway that's where I'm at
All right. Well, <clears throat> reached a, uh, a stage here where we're almost complete. A uh, couple more steps to go. But let's talk a little bit about composition. Uh, I have to admit that I haven't done a lot of painting where these objects here in the foreground are so large compared to the uh, canvas. Uh, this is a 24 inch wide canvas and this little guy has to be a third of it. So kind of uh, interesting on composition for me of how do these big pieces uh, balance out with respect to the overall canvas and the uh, the distant work in here. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, that's what it was. I was standing in, in the water here uh, as this water come up on, came up on these rocks and just kind of looked across the river and uh, these rocks were right in my face and they were big. So I, I kind of like the way it turned out. Um, different. Still this one here, eh, da, 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 don't know what, uh, it's there, I put it in. It's a little late to take it out, so I'm gonna have to live with it. Um, but uh, compositionally, I think we're, we're good. I like the, the flow this way. Uh, that's just me. You know, it's all a big experiment, who knows? You go on to the next one and you might like it better, you might like it worse. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glaze a few of these rocks because I need to bring this uh, red oxide uh, with some green in there. <clears throat> Probably hit that first with a ultramarine blue trans red and bring that blue into there glazed and then come back over that with a green uh, because the rocks were uh, heavily mossed up and a lot of growth was on them. So I want to glaze that piece first to give those rocks a little more depth in this area and then maybe come back after that and just put some finishing touches on the foreground rocks. All right, here we go.